So welcome to the afternoon sessions of Big Talk from Small Libraries 2022. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, for those of you just joining us for the day, um, we are recording for the whole day. So recordings of all the presentations along with the any um, slides they have, handouts, resources will all be made available afterwards um, when the recordings go up for this year's show, uh, this year's conference. Um, it does take me a week or two to get through everything and edit everything out, so um, it won't be immediately. Um, um, when they are ready, I will post and announce so you can have access to all of those. If you are looking for continuing education credits for watching the conference today, you can receive that at the end of this uh, at the end of the conference, the GoToWebinar software that we use will automatically email everyone who logged in live an email that says thank you for attending. This email serves as proof of your attendance. There will also be a PDF certificate attached to that that you can use. Um, here in Nebraska, we also have a special CE reporting form that our Nebraska library staff and board members can use to report, to report their um, attendance at the conference. But if you're from outside Nebraska, we can't award your state's um, uh, CE, but you can take those doc that documentation and bring it to whoever does do that in your area. Um, we have had that um, they've accepted it as CE credit um, many times before over the history of the conference, so you should have no trouble with that. All right, so we are going to jump into um, citation instruction and support at a small academic library. Um, with us today is Deborah Harmon and Brandy Horn, who are both um, instruction reference librarians at the um, Greg Graniteville Library and the University of South Carolina in Aiken, South Carolina. And their FTE of the university here, you had the 3,865 still pretty accurate there. So a pretty small, um, as I said, small academic uh, library there. And they're going to talk about something that um, many of us probably would have had desperately wanted when we were in uh, college, <laughs> um, either as an actual student or as a librarian, as I was in my previous life before I came here to the Library Commission. So I'll just hand it over to you, uh, Deborah and Brandy, to tell us all about what you've done at your library. Great, and uh, thank you very much, Krista, and good afternoon, and welcome to Citation Instruction Support at a Small Academic Library. I am Deborah Harmon, and I am an Instruction Reference Librarian and an Archivist at the University of South Carolina Aiken, and with me is my colleague, Brandy Horn. I'll let her kind of introduce herself real quick. Hi, I'm Brandy Horn. I'm also an Instruction Reference Librarian and um, sort of the instruction point person in the library, so a lot of the instruction scheduling goes through me. Okay, so as may be evident from our title today, we will be speaking to you about citation instruction and support at a small academic library. We will discuss our experiences working to improve citation consistency across our campus and how our small team of librarians has been able to become campus leaders with citation support and improve citation consistency across the curriculum. So we'll begin by talking about the context and challenges, at USC Aiken and then uh, Brandy will speak to you about building a comprehensive approach to citation support. And finally, I will discuss practical steps and strategies for leading citation support on a small academic campus. Um, USC Aiken is an undergraduate public liberal arts college in Western South Carolina, so just across the river from Augusta, Georgia, which y'all may know about because of the masters. Um, and as Krista mentioned, we have about 3,865 full-time students. Um, as a librarian with many roles, including working with the university archives, I have to mention a little bit of campus history. Uh, we opened in 1961 and were originally a two-year branch of the University of South Carolina. Students were able to start their academic career here, but had to graduate from USC in Columbia. In 1976, we became an independent, separately accredited, separately funded member of the USC system. Today we have 169 full-time faculty and maintain a number of part-time faculty. As a smaller campus, our focus is on teaching and we welcome students from 39 states with 86% coming from South Carolina. So we have a lot of uh, local area students. 38.6% um, of our students represent racial ethnic minorities. 22% uh, of our students are first generation students, 10% veteran or military, and 29% are non-traditional students. 
So at the Greg Granville Library, we have five library faculty and five staff members. And as I kind of uh, mentioned earlier, we all wear multiple hats, as I'm sure um, many of us do. Um, I am the archivist. I am also the nursing and psychology liaison, part of the library instruction reference team, and have for many years served as our LibGuides Lib administrator. And I'm very happy that I'm in the process of passing that one on. Um, yay, colleague. Um, I am also kind of known as the APA lady here. And even I was at the grocery store one time, the snow walked by and I'm like, you're the APA lady. And I'm like, yep, that's me. Um, so um, we moved to a liaison model uh, within the last five years and kind of more formalized some of our relationships with different departments on campuses, on campus. And one of our points of pride is our library instruction program. We teach a lot of classes and have really good faculty buy-in. We have also historically had over 2,900 reference interactions every year. So when I began at USCA in 2010, the library was doing very little citation support. We had limited citation materials and did not provide citation instruction or individual support. And sadly, there, were, uh, there was also not a real campus effort to support citation. When working with our students and talking to faculty, it became very apparent that the lack of support was creating barriers to proper citation on projects. And most significant to me and a colleague, it added to our students' frustration and anxiety with research. So let me begin by saying we have some really remarkable, collaborative, student-centered faculty. That said, we have encountered some really interesting things with citation in the library instruction classroom. And for those of y'all that work with classes, you know that you get to see the prompts and you get a little bit of insight as to what's actually going on in different classrooms. And we've seen everything from modified styles to using older citation style edition rules to just incorrect citation applications and faculty who just don't care. Um, and one of my favorite examples was something that Brandy ran into just a few years ago, and that was an assignment where students were required to use footnotes with APA. <laughs> so that was really, really interesting and a great opportunity for us to kind of kind of help. So there are a number of reasons um, that this happens um, with faculty. Faculty are sometimes really attached to the citation edition they used when working on their dissertations. Just last week, I was speaking to someone who was lamenting the loss of two spaces after a period um, with the APA 7th edition. Also, faculty may not be aware of citation guideline updates or the details of these updates. And sometimes they simply make mistakes and misunderstand the guidelines or don't have the time to brush up on citation rules. So this is all understandable, but unfortunately, faculty inconsistency with citation directly impacts our students. And while it's not the only cause of student citation issues, it is a major contributing factor. So in these cases, students struggle to reconcile inconsistencies with citation. The mixed messages can impact their grades and their confidence with writing and citation. So in one class, they don't, it, citations don't matter. And then another class, they lose 15 points for incorrect citations. Students will also encounter multiple citation styles during their time in college. They have MLA for their English classes, but if they major in psychology, nursing, business, or education, they're gonna be using APA um, for their major. And uh, for most of y'all that know the difference between APA and MLA, they're really different. That is a major transition of tiny details. So these inconsistencies paired with a void of leadership on campus citation can create a culture of who cares, who knows, and for the students, this is just overwhelming. Um, it is also worth acknowledging that students will sometimes just take the easiest route and use citation generators. And also, um, you know, the citations and databases must be right, right? They, they say that all the time. I used it from the library database. It has to be correct. Well, that's that's not always the case. And, and, and I think we have an opportunity to kind of help communicate um, that the guidelines are the, the core source of things. So um, working at a small library, there are, there are some ongoing challenges too. Um, most of the major citation styles used in colleges have had updates in the last couple of years. Um, and some of them have had pretty major changes, including I believe the 2016 MLA and the 2019 APA uh, change were massive. 
Um, and along with these, um, you have inconsistent adoption of the citation updates across the campus. You, some people are using APA 6, while others are using, um, in the same program, are using APA 7th edition. Um, and also, if you're supporting citation, these updates require that we have to update our materials and rethink how we're teaching or communicating and supporting citation. So um, for those of us at small libraries interested in supporting citations, taking on a new project or initiative can be daunting. Uh, the reality is small libraries usually have few faculty or staff. Um, there is limited time for new initiatives and most of us are already carrying a heavy workload. Um, and some colleagues may argue that it's not the librarian's domain to support citations or may express concern about the level of citation support a library is able to ride with everything else they're balancing. Um, we have limited budgets, copies of brochures aren't unlimited, and buying good screencasting technology for videos may be cost prohibitive. Furthermore, citation support is not a one and done. Um, as citation styles change, as I just mentioned, new materials have to be created and updated. Um, and that requires staff time and also potentially a cost. And finally, within a limited uh, staff, not everyone is comfortable supporting citation, nor do they necessarily have the expertise or interest. Um, so de despite these challenges and limitations, it can be done. And to be honest, I think our effectiveness as a campus leader with citation support is because we are a small academic library. And so this presentation will share how we built a comprehensive citation support initiative, and we will also share practical steps for small libraries interested in working to improve citations on their campus. So before we dive into the next section, I did want to frame what we mean by citation support. Um, so we provided our definition of citation support and note that it is a block quote because it is 45 words. Um, so um, citation support, um, as we're utilizing it, is uh, refers to any service or resource designed to aid students in the comprehension and proper application of citation manual style rules. These activities include, but are not limited to, guidance and instruction on citation, mechanics and adherence to citation manual and writing guidelines. So I am now going to pass on the torch to my colleague Brandy, and she will talk to you about building a comprehensive approach to citation support. All right. Can everybody hear me? Deborah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> All right. Um, as you said, my name is Brandy Horn. Um, and we've talked about uh, who we are as an institution and the challenges and issues we've been facing. So, yes, now we're going to look at how we've been addressing that um, on our campus. So, next slide. Thank you. Um, so, currently, the library strives. Um, to provide leadership for campus efforts um, to support citation and proper attribution. While it's still a process, um, citation support and consistency have improved significantly as we've stepped in and kind of worked our magic in certain areas. Um, librarians can play an ongoing significant role in ushering the campus through things like citation updates, because you know those happen every few years, and especially when you're dealing with multiple citation styles that's going to happen fairly regularly. So that's something that's going to be an ongoing um, effort from the librarians and adapting to curricular changes as new programs are introduced um, or as specific um, academic disciplines. We have recently had um, sociology switch from ASA to APA. So helping them make those sorts of transitions as well. Um, these are areas where the librarians can step in and, and kind of facilitate that change. Um, librarians can drive the conversation around citations on campus. I think this is important and we'll, we'll kind of like echo this sentiment as I go through these slides because I think it's important for people to understand that you have, that we have this position and we have this ability on campus um, that I think a lot of people don't leverage or don't feel like it's their place, but it really is our place and it's something that we can naturally and if not necessarily easily, but maybe sneakily, kind of like insert ourselves to kind of facilitate um, uh, positive changes on our campus. All right. So this didn't, our efforts didn't start as like an intentional, oh, we're going to systematically like, you know, take over citations on campus and then be citation um, divinity or whatever. That wasn't really the intention, but as um, my colleague pointed out, like there are issues that we kept seeing um, happening uh, as reference librarians that, you know, 
um, over time, we began addressing and finding uh, finding our way through as far as um, supporting these different things. And you know, there's been some trial and error, like we'll do this and then, oh, that's not working very well. Let's step back. How can we approach that differently? Um, so it's not something that was put in place as like an intentional program, but it's something that's grown organically over time based on needs that we've seen and um, as we've gained uh, kind of confidence and, and comfort levels with this. So advantages, and like I said, librarians can really can drive this conversation. So advantages of library leadership with citation support. Um, although librarians exist outside of academic programs, we're actively engaged with them, with all of them, um, to some extent or another, uh, through reference desk, dealing with the students, through library instruction, and our roles as liaison to departments, and you know, doing things like collection development with faculty and helping them with their issues um, in that regard. But then also on our campus, we're at least on our campus, we're faculty. So we're involved in faculty assembly, we're on faculty assembly committees. So we're interacting and working with faculty all the time. So even though we're not in one of the specific programs, we are interacting with all of them um, and they're all familiar with us. Um, you know, just by virtue of the fact of our daily roles. Uh, and so we're able to build on these relationships and, and leverage and kind of show off, but leverage our expertise as, um, you know, in through things like instruction and support and collaboration. So instruction, as I said, is one of those areas and kind of we can think of that as like a two prong instruction to students um, actually doing library instruction as faculty requested for their classes. Um, we work with the writing center and we do a lot of the writing center workshops for various things. That are in like refer or research or library related, but specifically we do all the citation style workshops, um, and then helping students at the reference desk and and by appointment, um, and we meet with them online and however. So working with the students as far as instruction, teaching them instruction, and kind of being that like central voice, but then also reaching out and teaching the faculty. Um, and we have like a top down like us going to faculty and then faculty going to students. But part of me, since we're kind of outside of academic programs, I also think this is like an octopus reaching out, like we're like grabbing everybody and pulling them in um, to us being the central authority. So dealing with, um, uh, you know, teaching faculty, there is a program I'm going to talk about a little later called Critical Inquiry. And the existence of this program necessitated the creation of a, of a, of a Critical Inquiry Institute that takes place in May and it's like a two day intensive training for faculty who are gonna teach in the CI program. Um, and part of that in, is um, a large part of that, part of that is in information literacy and then citations is a part of that. And so that was an opportunity for us to kind of, you know, kind of step in and assert ourselves in the area of citations. Um, also reaching out to faculty, anytime there's a new citation style update, um, the librarian, um, who's kind of responsible for that citation style in the library based on the liaison areas, uh, kind of tackling that and figuring out um, the chain, the differences between the most current, the current update and the previous edition and figuring all that out and then reaching out to faculty saying, hey, I've done this. Um, you, would you like me to go over these differences with you? Would you like me to join a department meeting? You know, that kind of thing. So having the library and take the initiative to figure those things out and then reach out to the departments um, and kind of like train them in that way as well by by really making their jobs easier, by offering to make their jobs easier. Um, also, leveraging our roles as outsiders, as we said, dealing with students at the reference desk and, you know, um, these various areas where we interface with them and help them with citations, being able to reach out with faculty, especially if there's a particular class or something and we're seeing patterns, we can say, hey, um, we're seeing this issue with your students. Is this something, um, you want to talk about or would you like us to do a session on this or something like that um and then also beyond that we have and i've said before and i'll talk about it a little bit more we have a really good relationship with the writing center and they have us come in and, and train their tutors on different citation styles as well um so we're consolidating kind of our influence um in these various ways next slide all right so as teaching librarians, kind of building on that, um, my colleague mentioned before, we have a really robust instruction program, um, over 200 sessions in academic year, and that includes writing center workshops. We do about 20, maybe 25 of those a year as well. Um, uh, we have a really robust instruction program, and as faculty request instruction, we do tailored sessions, as I'm sure a lot of you do, 
um, you know, you kind of like craft the session based on the assignment or the type of research that you're, they're doing or whatnot. Um, and so in our re instruction request form, we have elements of, you know, uh, instruction that people can request, like um, finding articles or evaluating information. And one of those elements is citation support. And of course, sometimes you're gonna have faculty that like check off everything and expect you to cover it all in a 15 minute session. And uh, clearly that's not possible, right? So that opens up the opportunity for us to have a discussion or have a conversation with a faculty member about what's feasibly um, what's feasible to cover in a 50 minute session or a 75 minute session, but then also to introduce the possibility of bringing students in for multiple sessions. So I do have a few faculty where they have like in their syllabus kind of a library week where the first session they come in and we talk about research, like how to find the sources and how to evaluate the information. And then the second session they come in and we talk about how to cite that information. Um, and then I have other faculty that bring their students in multiple times throughout the semester. Um, sorry, <laughs> we have faculty that bring, one of, one of those faculty uh, just waved at me. Anyway, so we have faculty that um, bring their students in multiple times over the course of a semester for different assignments. And you'll talk about citations for the specific kinds of things that they're doing. So when we talk about um, responsive citation instruction and responsive instruction, um, trying to figure out what their needs are and then kind of talking them into a structure that would work best for their students. Um, so that we can cover citation elements that are appropriate for them um, uh, and that will make sense to students in the context and it opens up us having these conversations with faculty about citation issues and how we might best um, address them <clears throat> next slide all right so both undergraduate and graduate students appreciate citation instruction and going through those details those fundamentals of citations um, such as parts of a citation and individual rules and formatting and things like that. Um, I think we should never assume that grad students have a handle on their citations. Um, just using me as an example, for undergrad, I graduated undergrad in 2002. I didn't start grad school till 2008. Also, undergrad primarily used MLA. When I went to grad school, it was primarily APA. So there's there should not be any assumption that grad students have a handle on their citation style. Um, because the, the, there's a good chance that they don't. And unless you're really immersed in citations all the time, you're not gonna hold on to that, right? It's not gonna stay in your brain. So the more that we can reinforce this and, and repeat this with the students, I think the, that will encourage um, uh, following or you know, uh, incorporating citations more accurately or more appropriately. Um, also in the upper level classes, and my colleague does this really, really well in her sessions, um, highlighting the importance of citation style and writing style as how the disciplines or the different fields communicate their research, highlighting that as the as the basis for that conversation and how that conversation goes. Um, as, like I said, especially in those upper level classes so that they know that there's a standard for communication in this field and this is what that standard is. Um, so that is another way to kind of um, make sure that you increase the student buy-in or interest in that. And also, again, for upper level students, I know a lot of people start using things like Zotero and whatever to collect their information, or you become a more confident researcher and you're using the citation tools in the database because you know it's there. Um, but highlighting the fact that a lot of times these can produce errors. And so you at least need to understand the citation style well enough to go through and fix them. Uh, so showing them how to use those things appropriately is, is part of, or building on that um, previous citation instruction. Yes. All right. <clears throat> so instruction collaboration, we have established ourselves, as I pointed out, where we actively and try to sneakily, but we have established ourselves as um, essential authority for citations on campus. Uh, we have, again, a really good relationship with the Writing Center. Um, and the fact that they're the next building over, but they feel much closer, we're friends with them. But we have a shared set of concerns and we work with students in very similar ways, like they're coming into us with specific questions or problems they're having and we're showing them how to do these things in the moment and how to actively create this finished product, right? So it's not just like talking about theory and, and handling things in a very abstract sense. We're actually doing hands-on saying, this is how you do this. So we have a very similar approach to how we work with students, even if our duties are divvied up. Um, uh, so we have a shared set of concerns. We work with them in a very similar way. 
Um, and so the strength in what we do lies in the fact that we're doing, we're using practice-based theory and pedagogy to assist students across the curriculum. So we're taking these theoretical concepts, we're taking these things like, you know, best practices and whatnot, and we're actually incorporating them in what we do and having the students create things with us. Um, so there are a lot, there are a lot of similarities in the in the way we work with students. And so it makes sense for that relation to build that relationship and to kind of like establish those areas that we're going to specialize in. So yes, next slide. Um, through this collaboration and I and and recognizing this relationship between us, um, we can take a very student-centered approach uh, to how we handle citations. So we're providing students with skills and resources necessary to succeed, and we're removing unnecessary barriers to to success. Um, barriers to success, things like you know, and our collaboration with the writing center can become territorial if you don't pay attention to it and if you don't kind of like head that off. So having a clear division of who's responsible for what and collaboration is necessary for that, for everyone to agree and feel okay about it. Um, and and also you can have a situation where, every, so you can have territorial, but then you can have the opposite problem where everybody feels like it's somebody else's issue. So if they go to the writing center, they'd be like, no, go to librarians. And librarians can go, you know, no, go to the writing center. So making sure that everyone knows what they're responsible for so that students are being helped when they need help and they're being helped in a way that is consistent. Um, so because we're kind of establishing ourselves as the central point for, low, for citations, we train the tutors, their tutors direct them to our materials. We provide them with quick reference guides. Um, we do the writing center workshops on citations. So we collaborate with them and we've kind of like established ourselves as the authority for citations. And then the writing center tutors can help students with it, but will defer to us when the need arises. So um, having that clear delineation and that relationship and we're all comfortable and we like each other, is ultimately beneficial for students because that takes away a lot of the drama that could, again, be barriers for them. Um, again, before, because we're involved in research and writing and citation, we're uniquely positioned to identify issues or barriers for students on campus. And because we have established ourselves as authorities on citation styles, um, we're also uniquely positioned to address these barriers and challenges and to facilitate, facilitate change. And then also to advocate for students because we're seeing this is, these issues. So, you know, we can step in and say, students are consistently having this issue. How, how can we go about working together to address this? So allow, being comfortable in that role and for, to advocate for students, I think, can further our, um, our ability to drive that conversation. Yes. All right, get myself straightened out in my notes. <laughs> slide of my collaboration managing. All right. Um, in order to meet the challenges and solve the problems we've seen on our campus, we've actively worked together to help um, our campus tra uh, transition through style changes. Um, currently, our campus is going, not this semester, we're still on MLA 8th, we're transitioning to 9th for the fall, but that's one of those things where MLA 8th came out like, a, or 9th came out a little bit ago, but the English department wasn't ready to transition yet. So as a whole, we're like, we're working together and um, one of the English faculty and the writing center director and I are working together to create new MLA 9th materials. So having that, those kinds of relationships allow us to kind of usher departments um, through these types of changes or disciplines through these changes. Um, and again, outreach has helped us create these partnerships with, re with English writing assessment, writing intensive programs. And then my, my colleague, Deborah Harmon, is going to talk about relationships with nursing and engineering. Um, and then my work with sociology and these individual classes to kind of uh, center ourselves and position ourselves to be able to accomplish that. Next slide. All right. So coordinated effort um, within the library. Right, uh, we are co we've coordinated our citation efforts, our citation support efforts, uh, by looking at individual strengths and preferences and comfort levels, and I think that's really um, important to pay attention to because not everyone is comfortable providing citation support, um, and and 
we found, my colleague and I did some research a while back, we found that there are not consistent perspectives on the librarian's roles in providing citation support. There are libraries, um, there are libraries where the librarians feel like it's not their role or that it's the writing center's job or something like that. So taking these kinds of perspectives into account when we're dealing with this within the library, um, providing internal training to other librarians with new style updates and for those wanting a refresher. So, you know, my colleague Deborah Harmon is the primary APA person. I'm the primary MLA person. So when things, new up updates come through, um, Deborah can kind of like orient me or orient the rest of us on this is what this is what APA is doing now and I can do this is what MLA is doing now. So we have like a central person that can kind of help provide that cross training. Um, and then again, cross train to be able to support questions about all styles at the desk because it doesn't matter who's at the desk, people are going to come in with questions about all sorts of things. So we want to make sure that everyone has at least a familiarity, a base familiarity with the citations and at least a comfort level with the manual right so that um they can navigate it effectively and help students uh, at the desk but if nothing else we can appropriate we can um, funnel students to the appropriate expert as necessary if there's a complicated question or something that we just don't feel com confident to handle with that particular thing we can put them in contact with the librarian who's primarily responsible for that citation style um and the the way that um the way that things go, that the way that things kind of shake out, librarians with their citation styles, each one is responsible for creating the support materials and instruction materials for their style. So updating a quick reference guide, um, that spe specific style uh, styles page on the website and that kind of thing. Um, so we do citation support materials, print and electronic. We do these quick reference guides that are really nice. Um, uh, we provide YouTube videos. Uh, and in the YouTube videos, we do short citation demonstrations. And then we also do like full classes, but with the YouTube videos, those, this is one of um, my colleagues like pride and joys as far as like the popularity of the YouTube videos. Um, so in 2018, 2019, there was about 1200 views, I think, or citation page hits. Um, oh, so these are embedded at the point of me, the, the page hits. And then um, almost 1300 and then um, like 28, over 2800. And then 2,500 is where we're at kind of right now through part of the year. But then how many views has your APA video gotten? Sorry, it's up to 128,000. Right. And that's, so obviously that's not just our students. Like we're a pretty small wow. campus. That's insane. But understandable right. so, now that I, when I think about it, yes, that <laughs> everywhere people need this, <laughs> obviously. Exactly. And and when you develop good materials, people are going to use them. And so, like, our APA yeah. is practically mm -hmm. viral as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. um, um, so we have these short videos. Um, we do like full classes of workshop videos, um, and then citation libguides. You know, we've got the different citation styles and have them broken out or whatever with the different resources, and including like things from other websites. So we pull all this together, and each one of us is responsible for maintaining a specific style so those things stay up to date. Um, you know, and easy to, to manage. Uh, let's see, yeah, and we link to the relevant citation guides in each library subject guide. So supporting students at the point of need. So in um, English, all the English related stuff, we have linked to MLA citation support and, you know, so on. Yes. <laughs> the next slide, is that? Yes, okay. Um, <clears throat> So providing one-on-one -on -one help at the reference desk by appointment. Um, uh, we have a book librarian tool on the website. People can meet with us face-to-face uh, -face over um, at the start of the pandemic when we couldn't do that anymore. We created the book librarian tool to be able to do online appointments as well. Um, so we can meet with students via Microsoft Teams or however, um, and we can help students with research or citations in that way. We had to establish barriers kind of early on because students would come in with the expectation that we would just correct their papers and we don't we don't do that we're trying to teach them how to incorporate citations appropriately um so we don't just go through and correct their papers uh we have a conversation we have them come and ask us specific questions or um if we see something like a consistent issue we'll talk to them about that issue and talk them through how to fix that um 
And so we use these experiences that we have with students bringing their papers in and seeing the kind of problems that they have to kind of inform how we treat citation instruction, how we handle workshops, how we do instruction in um, library and in, in the classes and in the library instruction sessions, um, because we're seeing firsthand like what kinds of issues they're having. And so we can address those hopefully at the start. And let's see. So I mentioned earlier critical inquiry a lot of our ability to create this centralized um, our authority in citations and our citation support our citation support uh, has been building on these other programs like the writing proficiency portfolio which is something all students have to submit in their junior year they take papers that they've written um, during those first few years and pull them together and they have to go through and and like have like they go through and fix their citations and make them consistent so we help through that um, we're pulled into that. And then Critical Inquiry, which was a program which recently was phased out, but it was part of our QEP, our previous QEP, where um, all incoming freshmen had to take this Critical Inquiry class. And a large part of that was an information literacy assignment and um, MLA citations as part of that. So that was taught by faculty in all disciplines. And we were able to reach out and kind of like um, influence and teach faculty across campus in that capacity so that we were able to build on these kinds of things to um, establish and assert ourselves as citation authorities on campus. Me again. Yes. Okay. So um, before I dive into the practical steps and strategies, I wanted to start with a case example of one of our more successful citation instruction support initiatives. Um, so my work supporting um, these. Deborah, I just want to jump into to remind yeah. everybody, don't forget to put in questions so we can make sure we grab them all before um, you know, at the end of the session here. So you have any questions uh, for Deborah and Brandy about what they've done, how they've done it, um, uh, questions about how you can do this at your university or college or um, ideas about what you've done, maybe. Um, yeah. Get into that question section before we're done. <laughs> Yeah, we'd love to, we'd love to hear hear y'all share what y'all y'all done that has worked also. Um, so again, before I dive into the, the 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 piece about practical steps and strategies, I did want to talk about um, a case that I've been working on, or a, a specific pro, uh, kind of initiative I've been working on since about 2011. Um, and really, it started with um, a conversation with a frustrated nursing faculty member way back in 2011. Um, and in that faculty member's efforts to support citation, um, the nursing faculty provided, oh, well, and in the program's uh, efforts to support citation, so the nursing faculty provided the sample paper of APA on a shared drive, but unfortunately, different faculty members were making updates to the same paper at the same time, and this is what the students were using as their model for APA. Um, and unfortunately, the paper got to a point where it was in such disrepair that it was no longer correct. And it had become like this weird war zone of updates with different faculty members making updates according to their understanding of APA. It was, it was, it was a very special thing. Um, and, and in addition, in that conversation with that faculty member who was telling me about all this, um, the student use of sources and citation was very concerning. Um, and they were teaching the seniors. Um, and so it, it began simply with me being invited to provide an APA workshop alongside my regular library instruction. And from there, I began to build a relationship with various other nursing faculty members. Um, in 2013, I began, began a wonderful working relationship with a really awesome nursing faculty member who also had an English degree. Um, and she and I began to work together to systematically improve the quality of nursing student library research, APA and writing, and what emerged was a nursing boot camp. Um, and the boot camp was primarily focused on nursing students in their first semester of the nursing program within their first writing intensive course. In this class, we had four class sessions, so I came in and spoke four times. Um, and uh, at that, we covered library research and APA basics, and then a little bit more on APA style and writing guidelines. We had an APA paper proposal peer review, so that was an in-class activity. And then we had a final paper peer review, again, another um, class activity. 
And over the four years, I had the privilege of working with this faculty member in this collaboration. We had an opportunity to try out new ideas, create activities, and author nursing-specific APA support materials. And some of my favorite activities included an APA scavenger hunt. So students, were, students in the nursing program are required to buy the APA manual as part of their class materials. And they were asked to use the manual to find the correct sec section and answer for a list of APA queries. Another really successful um, thing that we did was the bad paper activity. And so this was an in-class activity where students were given an APA paper with tons of errors um, in the reference list and the in-text citations on the paper formatting. Um, and they were asked to locate and correct the APA formatting in-text and reference list error, error, errors. Um, and then the APA paper proposal peer review was a super ineffective, um, effective in-class activity. And before the class, students were to locate the sources for their paper, so they had to do their research and then format it in APA and include a APA format cover page and the references, um, and then the students brought these to class. The peer review activity was actually a creative solution to a problem we encountered um, uh, supporting the cita citation needs of the students. So before the peer review, the first year student nursing students would come to see me in mass. So the class size for nursing is about 50. And so while they weren't required to meet with me, they all made appointments with me one semester. And Brandy probably remembers this. It was two weeks straight of nursing student consultations. And I know she, she helped that. So in some ways we were victims of our own success. So the solution so that everybody kind of had some individual um, attention and addressing their specific needs, was to host a peer review in the class where students would have their references and cover pages, you know, checked by one of their classmates and the faculty and member I were there kind of present to kind of answer questions throughout. So that was a really great um, activity. Unfortunately, that faculty member retired in 2017, um, but I've been lucky to work with other faculty in that first semester class to provide a strong foundation in APA and research. And so while the boot camp has changed over the last few years with new faculty, it is an important and critical nursing student fundamental and is applauded and supported by the dean, the faculty, and most importantly, the students. So beyond the initial boot camp, the other faculty became interested in improving APA and I was invited to several other classes to discuss APA and library research. I am in, now in most of the other writing intensive courses in nursing and I am able to strategically scaffold and reinforce APA and research skills across the nursing curriculum. There are curriculum is very, um, you take this class in this semester, and so you're actually able to build and scaffold um, uh, uh, APA um, proficiencies and stuff throughout the entire curriculum. Um, we are also now able to reinforce the idea that APA, as uh, Professor Horn mentioned, is about um, how the field of nursing communicates research and is a professional skill alongside other lifelong information literacy skills. Um, and nursing students know to depend on me, and I am truly their guide on the side throughout the program. As mentioned earlier, um, fa as faculty leave, things change. So while new faculty all have embraced the boot camp approach, it has shifted through the years and some better than others. Presently, I'm working with a new enthusiastic faculty member who is rethinking the class project, and we are having some great conversations about how we can best incorporate library research and APA into the course. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, citation manual updates also provide changes, but also these are opportunities. And importantly, the opportunity to teach the teachers about the changes of APA style and refresh their knowledge base with citations and research. So building on this success, um, I have been able to build on the momentum of the work with the nursing department. I created a lecture for the nursing faculty and then for APA 7th edition. And then I took that and I recorded it. And um, then I shared it for with education and psychology. I catered to those disciplines and were able to share it. And I had some really positive feedback from that. Um, we have also established ourselves as citation authorities on campus, as Brandy has mentioned. And I think a lot of it is, is all this kind of energy we have, have going around everything. And I was invited to both an engineering and a business class. We have never been in engineering and really haven't had much traction in business before. So I was really excited um, to get into these classes. And it started with APA, but in working with the faculty members, I have slowly started adding more and more information literacy instruction um, as the research needs come to the surface when I'm talking to the individual faculty members. So I'm, I'm, I'm still doing APA, but I'm stretching out the information literacy 
And I've been really um, excited about that. And Brandy can even attest to the fact that we've recently seen a decent uptick in library instruction requests for the business school. So um, that's that's really exciting. And then we kind of mentioned the, my strange success from the YouTube video from August 2018 um, that kind of went viral. And yeah, it's at 128,000 views with over a hundred uh, over a thousand subscribers and it just kind of baffles me that people have listened to me for over 13.5 thousand hours like just think about that 13.5 thousand hours people have listened to me i'm sorry anyway um so now i'm going to get to the the meat of what i think might be helpful um for all of you um so i'm going to talk about practical steps and strategies for leading citation support on a small academic campus um, as may be uh, evident, first become an expert and build authority. So to lead a campus, we must first become knowledgeable about a citation style. This doesn't mean citation perfection at all, it, but it does require mastering some of the fundamentals. Remember what we think is simple is actually can be complex to a student and they may not have that framework. So even learning the fundamentals can be very powerful. Um, and then finding ways to communicate these ideas. Um, learn how to use the manual, familiarize yourself with quality sources, and start simple. Create a handout, create a workshop, or something simple with a few citation fundamentals. Um, it doesn't have to be grand. Again, um, my conversation, my, my work with the nursing department started simply with a um, conversation with a frustrated uh, faculty member. Um, citation updates like the, re like the recent APA and NLA changes are a great time to start an initiative with faculty members and students um, as they may have a, a more a higher interest in learning about the new style. Um, and during the holiday break of 2019, I culled through the manual, uh, 20, the APA manual, examined it, and then I thought about what's changed and how can I be most supportive of our students. And then finally, um, learning the citation fundamentals and creating resources naturally builds some expertise and authorities and others now consult me as I'm like the one in the know. Um, and then I think as uh, Brandy has kind of mentioned, leveraging our role as an outsider. Um, and one challenge identified earlier in the presentation was inconsistent faculty adoption of new citation styles, faculty misunderstanding of citation rules and other issues. And we can leverage our roles as outsiders and encourage or push the conversation with the department about when they'll be adopting the new style and how they will implement the change. Specifically, they'll take a phased approach. In other words, have all the, allow the seniors to graduate with the existing style or switch the entire program all at the same time. We've seen it in both ways, um, but we just kind of can see what that rule is and then kind of enforce it and support the students um, in that way. And also as an outsider, you can be effective in helping to teach the teachers. That is an example, I had a department that had some serious problems with citation consistency. I guess you guess what that one is. Um, and I was provided, invited to provide a lunch and learn about the major citation issues we were seeing in student papers. And a rather lively debate unfolded. It became apparent that some faculty have very different understandings of the style. As an outsider, I was able to work with the faculty to help realign and correct their uh, understanding of the style. Um, also, accept your limitations and know that you won't be able to reach everyone and you can't force faculty to incorporate citation support or even adopt a new style. Um, and even if the department agrees to adopt citation on a schedule, you will have outliers. So just know this and do your best. Be pragmatic and flexible. Faculty and students are under deadlines and stress. Advocate for students, but know that this transition will take time. Find your citation partners and build collaborations. Collaborations can help build authority, build consensus, and provide you with a support network. As evidenced by our earlier discussions, collaboration is critical and partnerships are key to helping a campus improve citation consistency. Um, in the library, find your partners on campus, reach out, find those partners as well, um, and then try to reach out to varied groups on campus because sometimes it's just a matter of trying a couple of different things to see what actually sticks. Um, and then I guess I guess we're starting to run low on time, um, but just know that as a library, small library, make sure you share the load. Um, with limited staff, it's important to find your collaborators and find people that are interested in helping. Seek those free online tools. If you're interested in learning about more free on tools, feel free to email me afterwards. I love to talk about technology. Um, and if you feel overwhelmed, again, start simple and look to others. 
Um, and, you know, feel free to browse through our stuff. And if you're interested in using anything or have any questions about it, you know, reach out. We're happy to, to be a resource. And um, final, finally, leverage your advantage as a small library. We know that our positive impact on campus is due to our reality as a small campus where you kind of know everyone. We have leveraged these relationships across campus and have been able to build authority, grow instruction, and improve consistency. As one who previously worked at a large university library, I know that our impact is greater because we are on a small campus. While more staff, more time, and a larger budget would have made our efforts easier, I feel that our scope of influence is greater at a small university and our efforts, our small efforts can have a big impact. Mm -hmm. So um, working to improve citation instruction support on a small academic campus can be challenging, but librarians are well suited to lead campus citation efforts. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation and that you have some ideas for how you can help foster campus consensus collaboration, provide leadership for citation instruction. We welcome your questions. Great, thank you so much, Deborah and Brandy. Um, this is for those of us who've worked in a university or are, this is great. Um, totally impressed by your viral videos. I, I mean, I now wanna go look at some of mine to see, I haven't really kept up with how many hours. <laughs> have been watched on ours from uh, this conference and from other things that we do. Um, we do have a couple of questions that we will grab um, before we switch into our next session. Uh, you'd mentioned that um, in the beginning how faculty were, um, well, to put it short, doing it wrong <laughs> with some of the citations and had uh, some differing opinions on how they're supposed to work and um, outliers. So how did the faculty take you telling them they were doing it wrong? I know faculty can have um, strong personalities. Well, see, that's why it's important to be somewhat sneaky. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> sure. You know, because you don't want to, I mean, they work, they work so hard and sometimes it's just like the lowest thing on their priority list, but it's, mm -hmm. it's impacting students. So, I mean, I think one of the most effective things was that lunch and learn where I sat down and we just talked about kind of distancing about mm -hmm. what issues we were seeing with students and then they started talking and then they started disagreeing and they had that conversation so it was kind of a, a way to kind of leverage ourselves as an outsider and kind of kind of force mm -hmm. that conversation yeah and it worked i mean obviously things have ch are changing and so much they're better gradually realizing i mean if the students are benefiting from it hopefully they're hearing that too yeah, absolutely. And, you know, share the success of our students. And, you know, if we have issues, like we can kind of bring it like we're seeing a lot of students with this, you know, let's have a conversation. And then sometimes at that point, you can kind of correct things. And, and especially if you establish yourself as an authority or an mm -hmm. expert, it, 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 it does help. And you're like, but it's on this page right here. What do you want to do? <laughs> also, I'll add to that in um, like the example before the faculty member who wanted their students to do footnotes, but then format them in APA. Um, I don't have a problem with saying to the class as I'm teaching, um, this is what your professor wants. This is going to be different from how this style is gonna be handled in other classes because the manual states it like this, but your professor wants, is requiring this for whatever reason for this particular assignment. So you'll follow these instructions, kind of like house rules, but just know that this is not consistent with how the manual states it. So just so, I'm managing expectations for the students. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if, as long as I couch it in a certain way, I, it's not like I'm coming in and undermining their authority and making them you know, feel defensive or whatever. So I, I, don't, I don't have an issue with actually telling students, this is not standard, but this is specific to this class or this assignment. And that's the way things are gonna be. And yeah, you know, it's good for them to know, be aware when you go into each class with a different professor, you may need to learn new instructions. Mm -hmm. Um, one other question I want to uh, get asked here before we do wrap up. Um, you now, you are doing this, obviously, and presenting this from the point of view of a university library with the students right there. Um, but what about um, distance or remote students that are, um, you know, well, taking classes remotely, so they're not in your library or in your city. And where they are, they go to their public library to do their work, or that's their research that, you know, and sometimes these public libraries do know we've got remote students here, distant students that are from so-and-so university, but they're coming to us. How would you, do you have any tips for um, them to the public library people who are help trying to help these distant students to handle this, how they would? 
Well, we're, you know, we, we part of our mission is to work with not only our student population, but also community members. So there may be an academic library in the area or they can ask questions on our YouTube channel. And I mean, it's that's that's a possibility to reach out, also providing them access to uh, quality tutorials, going and looking at, you know, maybe some area academic institutions or, you know, like Excelsior OWL um, and finding some good tools to hand to those students to take kind of take away with them mm -hmm. that might also help but yeah they can like our area students can contact us and if you don't have to be a uca student for me to help you with citation also i the the public library we have traditionally had like a fairly good relationship with them and they will direct students to us because they know like they will direct people to us because they know that they can come in and we have some public computers for them um so I think a lot of times they they they're just they'll send people to us. Um, although I have to say I haven't done like a specific reach out to the public library and say we have these citation resources and that probably would be a good idea to do. Um, so thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> yeah, but I, that might be an advice for a public librarian who's having these people these students come in and they're like at a loss. Reach out to whoever is your local university or college, uh, whether or not this is where that student is from. There may be resources for them there. I mean, just like public libraries, we are all about, very much about resource sharing and interlibrary loan. Universities are too. They're not always clo in closed little bubbles. It's I've worked at them. I know, <laughs> and sometimes. Yeah, that whole don't reinvent the wheel is pretty is pretty often <laughs> pretty often pretty oftenly stated. Mm -hmm. Consistent across the board. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Deborah and Brady. This is great. Lots of good um thank yous coming in our um presenters or from our audience today. All right.